reminds me of when you know I had Marcel going into his senior year and lost him for the year, and I thought, oh man, you know what's going to happen when he comes back? You know, because you can go one of two ways off of an injury. You know, you can either woe was me and come back and you're not ready to go, and you have to kind of trick yourself into playing again, or you come back just chomping at the bit. You're mature and and uh, and you miss the sport. And, He's missed it, and you can tell. And he comes back, and he's anxious to get out there and play every day in practice. I remember being in that locker room with you and Mike after the West Virginia game, and you guys kind of grinned at each other and said, they're, they're not there yet. They're young. But, boy, when those young receivers grow up, are they on pace where you want them to be this spring? Yeah, we're just trying to raise the bar with them now. You know, I mean, across the board, I think we're in very good shape. You know, we've got a couple three deep, you know, wideouts right now. Um, I'm not saying that there's a bell cow, that's that's for sure. It's not like, you know, you're running out there with Blackman who's, who's won the Blitnikoff or Tylen who's a finalist and you know, you guys know the drill, but but um, we've got a lot of capable guys and, and I think it makes us more well rounded probably than we've been in the past. Certainly deeper. I know reserves are coming, the cavalry's coming at the offensive line, but you feel like you've worked around the situation there as best you can to I accomplish. Think so. You would like to think that as coaches that we're just trying to do the best that we can for um, the big picture, uh, meaning all positions, you know, offensive line, defensive line, obviously, the trenches, but also to make sure that our quarterback feels it too. You just can't go out there and go seven on seven all the time, you know. So we've had some nicks and bumps and bruises and all that kind of stuff, and we're a little bit light there. But at the end of the day, I think we've given most of our team the best chance that they have to, uh, to get out there and play with, you know, 11 on 11 football. Sorry if you got asked about but, you know, obviously it comes up when I get asked the question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, so from time to time it does. And, and do I think it's, it's a good – heck, yeah, I think it's a good thing, you know. And, and uh, I want it to go well. I want it to go well. I want more doors to be opened. Um, you know, when you look at the Big 12, and, and I think it's just myself and Derek um, in the Big 12 and, yeah. and no minority head coaches, you know, I, I'd like to see more. And, and I think this is this is a good step, and, and um, we've had some good runs here, and we're winning ball games, and he's had a lot of success. And I'm looking forward to this season, and working with Derek, and, and trying to get another great season here, and hopefully create more opportunities for minorities down the road. Yeah. I was talking with Spencer, and he said he doesn't hardly ever think about this, uh, his performance in the Fiesta Bowl or, or even that game. Is that something um, you kind of encourage for guys to not think about that and just to move on? Yeah, win or lose, okay. you know, it's just like you want to forget about the Baylor one, but it's hard to now, but you do want to forget about it and, and move forward. And um, maybe had a little hangover going in the beginning of the Fiesta Bowl, but got rid of it pretty quick and got that game, and I think we're moving forward now and on the right track. And, but you can't, you can't harbor it forever, but you do have to learn from it, you know. And, um, and learning from the Fiesta Bowl, I mean, we played better with tempo. There's no question, you know, and, and um, Spencer's good with it. And, and as long as we have the receivers and we're healthy, you know, when we started at the beginning of the year last year, it was just not the identity we could have. You know, we couldn't play with that much tempo because we were playing with young guys and they were hurt. I think we had, I counted up the other day, I think we had seven or eight receivers that were out are starting three after the first game. You know, so when you try to play with that kind of tempo, you have to have veterans. And uh, we just never had a veteran crew until we got about to game four or five, you know. We lost um, Tay right out of the gate, obviously Braden Johnson, you know, Bryson Green got her, I mean, the list goes on. So by the time we got everybody back and flowing again, moving Blaine to tight end, right, we moved him to that cowboy back spot. That's when things kind of started to, to move a little bit more for us. And we were able to do more of the things I think that Spencer is, is really good at doing. Is, is there anything you think Spencer specifically learned or you know improved from that he's kind of carrying over from that Fiesta Bowl into this spring and next season? Um, I just think it's maturity. I just think that um, he's he's more relaxed, especially in the pocket when we're doing our drop back stuff. I mean, he's just comfortable back there, you know, and, and um, he's he's comfortable in knowing where everybody is. And uh, I don't necessarily know if it's from a game or anything like that that's pushing him forward. Again, I, you know, I go back to that Baylor one, but, you know, he came out of that one and took it hard and has been able to put it behind him. Yeah. So I think that was a big step in his, in, you know, his maturation. So um, I think as we go forward, he's going to be in good shape, you know. And, and, I mean, there's a reason why the guy's, you know, first team all Big 12. I mean, the guy can play. Yeah. So we're fortunate to have him here and, and uh, ride him next year.
And last thing for me, do you think Spencer's performance in that Fiesta Bowl did anything for the public perception of Spencer Sanders? Did that change in any way after that Fiesta Bowl, you think? I don't know. You know, I think our Cowboy faithful are, are Cowboys through and through, you know. Um, maybe on the national scene, maybe it, maybe it pushes him towards more honors, postseason honors, or at least things that he can be involved in this year, you know. Um, some accolades for him towards the back end of the season. Yeah, that all goes. Yeah. Um, if you're not in it to begin the year, you're probably not in it at the end of the year. So I think he's, you know, probably got a little foothold on it, a little, a little handle on it. So um, it'll give him a chance towards the end of the season um, to repeat as a Big 12 player, maybe an All-American, something like that. And we'll do everything we can to try and help him get there. Mike was saying the spring game, you know, game might not even be a fair word. It'll probably be more like a, a, a practice. Well, do you have any goals going into that, or uh, what would be a successful spring game look like for you? Clean play, you know. Uh, minimizing penalties, minimizing turnovers, um, nobody hurt, you know, injury free. Um, that to me is going to be what Saturday's all about, you know. I, I don't want to go out there and just throw balls into the dirt or drop balls or, you know, have bad snaps or any of that kind of stuff. We want to try and eliminate as much of that as possible and just play clean football and come out of that thing and have nobody in the training room on Monday morning. Life is good. Yeah. Have you seen Brennan make any jumps in his third year of the program and kind of how much of a leadership role does he take in that wide receiver group or how vocal is he, you know? He, well, he's not a real vocal guy to begin with, mm -hmm. um, but he leads by example and he comes to work every single day. Um, he plays hard and he's been catching the ball and playing well. So right now he's he's having one of the better springs of the receivers that right now. I mean, he's, he's playing well. And... Um, you know, he's leading the group and doing a good job. Now, Braden leads too, Braden Johnson. But between those two, they've, they've got the, uh, the group as, as far as leadership goes. So, um, yeah, he's good. You know, he's definitely making a jump. Yeah, that little joker can do it right now. I'm not complaining about anything. He asked me how he could get better. I said, you know, just try and break down, stick your foot and stay in the hula hoop. We'll be fine, you know. After Chuba and Tylen left, Tamar and Jalen Warren stepped up. We talked about Brennan, do you think he's going to step up? But who else do you think is going to take that leap in this next year? That's a damn good question. I couldn't point you at that one. We just keep going, you know. I mean, there's lots of guys that have a handle in that, or, or a chance anyway, um, a hand in it. Um, you know, Jaden Bray's playing great. Um, Brayden Johnson's playing really good. BP, JP, I mean, there are a lot of guys that are playing really good. I couldn't tell you. I really couldn't tell you. Um, that's why, you know, I got a question earlier, you know, how's the depth, all that kind of stuff. And, and I don't know if we have that marquee guy right now that everybody's expecting to have to double cover or anything like that that we've had kind of in the past. Um, but we're, we're more sound from sideline to sideline and we're deeper. And um, that's pretty good. So I don't, I don't know if you know where the ball is going which is a good thing. For more information, you can visit TulsaWorld.com.